Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Teresa and if you clicked on this video, chances are you are in the market for a new monitor, namely ultralight monitor. So in this video I will unpack this one that I got. LG 34GN850. <laughs> so in this video I will show you why I picked this one, I will unbox it, I will do the setup, first impressions and I will tell you a little bit more about if I think it was a good decision or not. So if that's something you're interested in, keep watching. Alrighty guys, so while you're watching this magnificent b-roll of me unboxing, let's quickly go through some of the technical details of this monitor. So first of all, this is again the 34 inch GN850B monitor, that's a mouthful, with curved ultrawide screen with 21 to 9 aspect ratio. By the way, for all things ultrawide, check out this subreddit. It is also the IPS panel, which has great color accuracy, fast response times and almost 180 degree viewing angles, which is obviously a little bit of an overkill, but you get it, wide viewing angles. Talking of response times, this monitor flexes 1 milliseconds response times, that's fast, and up to 160 hertz refresh rate. It also is G-Sync compatible, whatever that means, and it has VESA mount 100 times 100. Here you can see the leg, which has quite aggressive design. Um, not everyone's cup of tea, but I quite like it. And here we have the leg, which I will probably not be keeping, just because I don't really like how it looks like, but more importantly, it is quite chunky, so it will take up a lot of space on your table, which, you know, it's not the most desirable thing. So I'll be replacing that. Uh, let's quickly put it together. You don't really need any tools, and ta-da! Oh, that hurt. So I've already put together the leg slash stand part and now it's time for the best part. You know it. So right off the bat, I'm quite pleased with how well wrapped up this monitor is. Um, obviously, you already saw me take out this part, but it's actually wrapped in a really thin plastic foil all around the edges, probably to avoid scratches and stuff. So yeah, I'll take it off now and then we'll put it all together. Putting in the stand is super easy. You just put it in top first, bottom second like just like that little leap of faith right now yay that worked and let's have a look yay look at a beautiful matte surface right against the window and now i'll put it on my desk the stand is quite chunky but nothing a monitor arm wouldn't fix quick repositioning and that's it all right let's quickly have a look at the accessories box that came with it bunch of cables really power supply which I believe is made out of two parts. Yes, I have the European plug, obviously. The HDMI to HDMI cable, because I have the old MacBook Pro 2015, and that one actually still has HDMI port, which is a blessing. Let's also have a look at what other cables are included. So we have this one, which is display port, to display port, and we have this other one, which is USB to... Yeah, sorry, I don't know what this cable is called, but it's this one in case you're interested. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just some instructions, which, you know, I didn't use. And yeah, that's it. So we will use this HDMI to HDMI cable to plug it straight into the monitor. And then we'll plug the monitor to the power supply and I'll be right back. So we'll now connect this power cable, the other side of it anyway, to this hole down there, just like that. And excuse this mess of a cable system, it's not quite, you know, uh, figured out yet. Here we go. Let's see the ground reveal. We have some text. Uh, not anymore, but it is plugged in now. We do have some text, not anymore. So I'll plug it into the computer. <laughs> right now and I'll show you what it looks like. Look at that! <laughs> Insert drum roll. Here he is. I mean, isn't he just 
stunning. The viewing angles are obviously amazing, the colors are vibrant, the contrast is great, as is the brightness in my opinion, and I really just don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, also, you can tilt it backward and forward, it's pretty good range, and you can also move it up and down, again, pretty decent range, it's just a little bit difficult to do with just one hand. Alright, so I have now connected my 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro to the LG 34G and 850. Before we get to the monitor first impressions, just one important note for all of you who also happen to be a MacBook user like me. Just don't forget that you must be charging your MacBook if you want to use it in a close clamshell mode, otherwise the monitor will just shut down the moment you close your computer. So right now I am connected to the charging, so let's see what happens. Brief moment, ta-da! But let's do attempt number two with not being connected to the charger. So I'll open this back up. All right, and I will unplug the charger. And now I will close it again. Let's see what happens. It shuts down, but Okay, so this is not what it did before, but I don't mind. <laughs> okay, this is a surprise. All right, now there we go. I was thinking it was kind of suspicious. If you are using it without a charger, just be prepared that the monitor, yeah, will say no signal entering the power saving mode. So always plug in the charger. I know that some of the other monitors, the ultra wide or other ones have like the USB-C uh, charging and data cable in one. This is not the case. This one doesn't have USB-C connectivity. Now I'll give you some of my first impressions and also I'll ponder a little bit whether this purchase was worth it or not because let's face it, this monitor is not cheap. It's not something you just casually buy every day. All right, so let's quickly look at why did I ended up going for 34 inch. So I was actually first hesitant whether I should go for 32, 34 or all the way to 38. And I kind of try to gather as much information as possible, which I will now, you know, uh, deliver to you in a distilled form. So basically, 38 sounds amazing, but the problem there is that first of all, the price. Obviously the price is just no comment. And they're really big, so we have to have a really big desk a lot of space and it's just like a little bit more of a hustle for you know more space sure but if you're going from a macbook or from a 27 inch monitor 34 it's already gonna be huge and all the extra hustle of 38 was not worth it for me so i was kind of left with the decision whether 32 or 34 and there i think you will not do wrong with either choice, but what was deciding factor for me was that I much prefer the horizontal workspace over the vertical because, you know, I do video editing, I sometimes need to have, you know, three, four files open at the same time and the 34 is just absolutely perfect for that kind of work. But if you're someone, you know, who rarely ever uses more than two windows and who needs to, I don't know, read long texts or just see a lot of, um, vertical space, then I would probably recommend going for the 32, but for my use, 34. Next possible question, why of all the models and brands available did I ended up choosing LG and this specific model? So first of all, I have a good personal experience with LG, I've never had any issues with their products and I also like that there is 24 month warranty, so that's two years, which is really good. Some other companies don't have that, some have longer, so this is something just to consider how important that is for you, but for me two years seemed like a reasonable time. And also to be honest, I saw a lot of my favorite YouTubers like use LG monitors, so I was like, if it's working for them. Okay, so another question you may be asking yourself or be looking for is what is actually the difference between this um, LG GN850, I give up obviously, and the LG 34 GP83A. So from my research and from all the evidence that I've gathered, it seems like those monitors are basically the same exact thing. The only thing that differs is the accessories that come with it. So one of them comes with like one less cable or one more cable or something like that. Really when it comes to it, 
the displays are completely the same thing. They are the same exact size, they are the same exact resolution, they have the same exact ports. Really, when it comes to it, they even look the exact same. So they are the same monitor. No one really understands why LG did this. But either way, I would just recommend to get the one that's cheaper and more available in your country. So for example, in my country, the 83A is basically impossible to come by. And when it is offered, it's like ridiculously expensive. While I was able to get this 850 for a pretty reasonable price, in my opinion. But I know that in some other countries it's the other way around, so just look around what's more available, more affordable, and go for the lesser evil. And then the last monitor I was kind of deciding between was the LG 34WN 80CB, which I actually think would also be a great option. It Pretty much most of the specs are the same, the size, the curve, the resolution. Uh, the main difference there is the refresh rate, I believe, and maybe the ports, but I'm not sure. But the refresh rate is like the number one difference. And actually, me personally, I don't even really care that much about refresh rate because I'm not a gamer. I play Crazy Taxi on my phone, on the toilet. That's about it. And actually, I was quite set on the ATCB until I noticed that the delivery times, again, where I live, are crazy and I would possibly have to wait like, you know, four to six weeks for it, which I really didn't want to. I've spent, you know, the last month or more deciding and researching and I was just ready to get one. And the other thing that I kind of, you know, how I maybe justified <laughs> spending even more money, because that already seemed like a lot of money, was that um, basically uh, my thing was that by buying a better spec and like a gaming monitor I basically broaden my potential pool of customers because a gaming monitor is still fine for everyday and office use while everyday and office use monitor is not fine for gaming so basically my thinking was that I can sell this monitor to my friend, to a gamer, to a office worker, to anyone while if I got the lesser spec then you know less people could basically buy it. But again, if I were to give recommendation, then if you know that you will be gaming and if you do want to get a monitor with possible better resell value, then I would get either this 851 or the A83A. But if you're mostly looking for a monitor for like everyday use, productivity, office work, just leisure, watching movies and stuff like that, then I think that the um, WN80CB will be more than enough. Okay, and the very last comparison I would like to make is how does the resolution of this monitor compare to the Retina display of the MacBook Pro? A lot of us MacBook users are spoiled because the Retinas are so good. So I was kind of scared that even though this monitor has really, really good resolution, no doubts about that, that I will still be, you know, a little bit disappointed because I'm so spoiled by the Retina display. But I must say that the difference is actually not that big. Even though the resolution may be a bit lower than what you're used to from your MacBook or other laptop, you kind of have to keep in mind that this is a huge monitor and you will probably not be sitting as close to it as you would with your laptop. And when you look at it from a meter away, you really cannot tell anything, even half a meter away. It's still an amazing resolution. So. I would not worry about it at all unless you really make videos in 4k or higher or you just have unlimited amount of money to spend then maybe yeah I would look into buying a 4k display so to just quickly recap if you have a higher budget I would get this one or the 83a if you don't care about the refresh rate and the resell value I would get this one you still get the curved screen you still get the same size the same resolution basically almost the same minus the refresh rate and if you maybe don't like the cursed screen idea and want to just get something similar but flat screen then this is maybe something you should check out and that's it for this video i hope you find it useful i hope you find it enjoyable by the way i'm still looking for speakers to connect with this because it does not have uh, inbuilt speakers so for now the speakers are just blasting from my closed up macbook pro which is probably not the best idea so if any one of you have any recommendation for a good not too expensive pair of speakers, let me know down below. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, also definitely let me know down below. I'll try to get back to every single one of you. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.